Would you like to know how to get anything that you want using the law of attraction? And I mean anything. This is not some far out esoteric, if you say these magical words, if you do this magical thing. No folks, whatever dream is in your heart, anything that you want, would you like to know how to actually start moving forward and creating that? Because if you do, and this video is just for you, and we are starting right now, so come on, let's kick straight on into it. Hello folks, welcome to Elevate for a brand new day. I hope that this encourages you and blesses you and uplifts you and inspires you. I hope you love your time here. And if you're new, a great big warm welcome. Make sure you subscribe so you don't miss a thing. There are some great topics of conversation coming up, folks. You know I'm here every day, seven days a week, talking about spirituality, law of attraction, making your dreams come true, sharing with you all the things that I've learned. And today is no different. I hope this one really helps to move you forward because I want to share with you today how you can make any dream come true. You can manifest anything with the law of attraction, but did you know there is something that's common to all of us, something that all of us journey through that keeps us a prisoner of where we are right now? And the difference between the people who can just seem to manifest whatever they want, who are living in the fullness of their promised land, who are working in their destiny right now, the difference between them and those who are constantly stuck in the same cycles of dysfunction, in the same hurt and the same heartache, month in and month out and year after year, the only difference is the people who successfully manifest, they've figured out what I'm sharing with you in today's video. So buckle up folks, this is not going to take a long time, but I truly believe this has the potential to catapult you forward into your promised land. So hold on tight. Make sure you thumbs up the video if you love it too. Leave me a comment. I'd love to engage with you. But folks, do you know, it's a, it's a funny saying, isn't it? Have you ever heard a saying that goes something like, you can't change the past, but you can change the future? I mean, it sounds lovely, doesn't it? It's a little bit cliched, but what a fantastic and wonderful notion to admit and acknowledge that the things that have happened in the past, we can't change them, but we can change the future. And ladies and gentlemen, that's what today is all about, but perhaps in a, in a bit of a deeper way than you might think. You see, for so many of us, our life is consumed by the memory of what has been. Every moment, we're doing two things. Every moment, we are moving forward. The clock does not stop ticking, does it? Every moment is a moment where we've moved forward. Time has progressed, but the progression of time does but one thing. The progression of time creates a memory. A memory is the past. We're moving to the future. But what happened to now? You see, now is the present moment, and it is in the present moment where things are created. But what we have, well, what we have a propensity to do as human beings, what we typically do is we... We look at the things that have passed. Now, this can be a wonderful servant. Looking at the cycles that you've been through, trying to gain some perspective through introspection, that can be your most faithful of servants when it comes to helping you recognize those cycles of dysfunction. And when it comes to showing you where you need to come up higher, we always talk about being reflective. But there's a big difference between being reflective and living in your past. Let me explain to you what I mean, and hang with me folks, this, this is really powerful. You see, being reflective is thinking about what you think about. Being reflective is thinking about where you've been, what you've done, what you've said, how you've acted, the interactions you've had, and the outcomes that they have generated. So we see that being reflective, times of deep introspection, they're of great value. Nothing has the potential to show you how to move forward more than looking with reflection on the things that have held you back. But so many people get stuck in the spin that the human experience has when we start reflecting. Because, again, the human experience. As soon as we think something, we shoot our mind back there and we immediately start feeling the feelings. So we start thinking about 
the hurt and the heartbreak. And instead of looking for those cycles of dysfunction, instead of looking for those opportunities to come up higher, even if we go into a time of introspection, a time of reflection with the sole intention that this is going to be a powerful time that's going to show me some things about me, about my character, about my journey, about where I can move forward. Even when you go into it with that mindset, what happens the first time you think about the love you've lost? What happens the first time you think about the divorce or the bankruptcy or the sickness? You start feeling the feelings of those moments. Your body responds to it. Did you know that your brain can't tell the difference between a thought with intentional feeling and the actual experience? Did you catch that? I was amazed when I was learning about neural networks and brain science to learn that the mind cannot differentiate between a thought with an engaged feeling. So getting your heart on board, becoming emotionally invested in that thought, it can't differentiate between that and the actual experience. That is why, if you look back on hurtful, and I mean the most painful seasons of your life, the first thing that happens is you start feeling sick, you start feeling uneasy, you start feeling something in your body. Because your body is preparing itself, it's going into self-preservation mode to go through everything that it went through in that season, even if that season was more than a decade ago. So for so many of us, we miss the power of introspection because we immediately engage our heart and start feeling those feelings and we get scared and we don't push through. But if you push through, if you push through, you will see the miracle in what I'm sharing with you now. You see, your past needs to become your servant. The things of your past, the things that have hurt you, they can't hurt you now. You've been through them. You've been through them for a reason. It's time to make them pay. You can't change the past, but you can use the past to set you up for a very different future. See, once upon a time, and I've shared the story with you on this channel t times before about how more than a decade ago, I lost everything. I lost my marriage, all of my possessions, my health, I had a massive nervous breakdown. And for a lot of years coming out of that, trying to make sense of how all of that could happen, I really mourned the things that I lost. I'd worked so hard for the Jaguars and Range Rovers, I'd worked so hard for the house and the material possessions and, you know, I really mourned the loss of those things. And then finally I came to a place where I had, it was almost like this revelation came upon me that said, just, just hold the phone there for a minute. Just hang on, Ben. There's no point in mourning the loss of what you've had. There are people going into their grave every day who have worked their whole lives aspiring to have the things I had in my 20s. Why not celebrate life? Why not be thankful for what you've had and look forward with expectancy instead of mourning the loss of everything that you've lost. When I came out of that and I began pondering this way of thinking, the change it made within me was tremendous. Now I can't change what happened in the past, nor can I live in the glory of what was in the past, but nor should I live in the hurt of what has happened. If I can celebrate all of those things instead of mourning their loss, all of a sudden I'm in a very powerful position. Because I've released them from my life, because I understand that if I was still supposed to be in that home, with those cars, in that career, if I was still supposed to have those things, if they were supposed to be with me right now, they would be with me right now. So by reverse engineering that, we can now say, if those things are no longer with me, then they no longer serve me in this season. That's not to say I'll never have a new Range Rover again. It's not to say I won't live in a big fancy house again. But do you know what? In releasing those things and understanding that what is with me now is what is meant to be with me now. I can celebrate the things I've had rather than mourn the loss of that which I thought had been taken 
from me. It's only a small shift in perspective, but it's one that is massive. You see, your past should serve you. It shouldn't hold you as a prisoner of itself. So what happens when you look back on your past? Are you a prisoner of those feelings? Is that past trying to hold you captive there? Or is that past your servant? Is it a platform for you to stand upon and rejoice and to look forward into your bright future? Because folks, I can guarantee you one thing. You can have anything you want. Even if you feel like you've had it and lost it. This is why the scripture talks about how God will pay you back tenfold and twentyfold and fiftyfold and a hundredfold for the things that you have lost. It was never about losing those things. It was about allowing them to become your servant instead of your master. When you are mastered by the things in your life, they will leave your life. When you regain your position of power and become the powerful creator that you are, when you step into that, you recognize that everything that's happened, it hasn't happened to you, it's happened for you. Everything that you've been through has set you up for right now. Now I can look back on my life and I can say, what was the purpose of working a hundred hours a week, week in and week out, to come out of it with nothing, nothing except a world full of hurt and heartache? Or I can look at that and say, the purpose of all of that is for right now. See, right now I'm standing in the middle of a promised land that I could never have experienced 10, 12, 15 years ago. Not a chance in the world. So I can look back on those things and say, I didn't lose those things at all. I made those things come to serve me. I now stand upon them as a platform and I look into my future and all of the destiny that is in front of me. And it is exactly where I'm supposed to be. And the same can be for you. You can have whatever you want. You need to stop being caught in the prison of the past. Allow your past to serve you. Allow the things you've been through, the things you've done, the things you've said, the things that have been said about you and done to you, all the hurt that's been given to you on a platter, and all the mistakes that you've made that you continually beat yourself up about, allow them to be your servant. You are their master, it's not the other way around. Look at your past, sure, but don't get stuck there. You can't change it. You can change the future. So stand proud, begin moving forward and possessing your dreams. Find the repeating cycles, find the opportunities to come up higher. But don't let it hold you in dysfunction. Your dream is worth too much. Do you believe it? If your dream has value, if you declare that you are going to see that dream come to pass, give the video a thumbs up. Leave me a comment down below. Tell me you're on board because I'm going to stand in faith with you and believe that everything you have been through just like me, is setting you up for a right now moment. It's setting you up for a destiny moment and that destiny moment is now. Walk forward into it. I believe in you. Folks, I'm thankful for your company. Make sure you're subscribed and before you go on and find something else to do today, would you go and have a look at either of these videos? They're going to help you take some steps forward. I love you so much.